This out of focus and honestly not very good quality footage is special because it's the first proper footage that I've shot with a working version of my digital Super 8 cartridge. Keep watching to find out how I did it. Hi, my name's Jenny List and it's time for another exciting installment of What's on Jenny's Bench. I left you in the last episode of this series with some very, very shaky uh, footage shot with a Chinese uh, ear examination camera, a little USB, um, for want of a better word, a USB microscope designed to shove in your ear. I come to the conclusion that I needed something that could focus in on whatever was coming out of the back of the lens from a distance rather than trying to put the sensor up against the lens and the ear camera was a good way to experiment and it proved that what I needed was a, a macro camera, a camera that could focus up really close. So what I came up with was this. This is the cartridge, again, with the same Raspberry Pi, the same camera module. What I've done is I've created a new uh, mount for the camera module. Uh, effectively, it's just a plastic tube and I don't know if we can get the light in to see. There's the little camera module at the end of it. So the camera module looks down the plastic tube and focuses on the active window where the image is supposed to be uh, projected onto the film in the Super 8 camera. But as supplied, this camera is designed for taking normal photographs. So it's designed to focus, this fixed focus camera, but it's designed to focus pretty well from say a meter or so to infinity. Uh, so the first thing I had to do was modify it to be a macro camera. Now, that's actually a fairly straightforward process. First of all, it's a bit fiddly, but first of all you have to break the glue that seals the lens in place, which requires going under a uh, magnifying glass, or in my case a little video microscope, uh, to chip away the glue, and then the lens just unscrews. Uh, and uh, if you screwed it in, it would focus further away, and if you screw it out, it will focus closer too. Now, it gets to about 10 to, 10 to 12 millimeters before the lens just falls out of the thread. So what I did was I made this uh, camera mount piece uh, about, about 20 millimeters long. Uh, so I've got a fighting chance of focusing in. Now, in this particular case, I haven't done a very good job of focusing. I could spend more time with Jerry, very gentle adjustments each time and get it exactly right. But I'm close enough for the job in hand at the moment, so that's where it is. Now, of course, I just shoved the camera in the tube and what I got was an image, but it had a very strong black bar across the bottom, which was a shutter artifact. Now, I tried everything to get rid of the shutter artifact and I thought it could be a software thing but in the end the best thing I did was to mount the camera at a very slight angle. So you'll see in this version I put the camera in the end of the tube, manually adjusted it until it had the least black bar shutter artifact and I put a little blob of glue there. This isn't perfect and I'm going to return to this and improve on it in a future version but for now, the little blob of glue keeps the image about where I want it. Now, of course, I can now shoot a reasonable image of whatever's coming through the lens. But, of course, the image I get is much wider than the image I want. Because I've got a camera with something like a sort of 60 degree uh, angle of field. Um, designed to take basically normal photograph pictures. And I'm trying to zoom in on a little sort of, I don't know, five or ten degree angle slice in, straight in front of it. Maybe a bit more than 15 degrees, possibly. So, uh, in my case, the image I want is actually just a sort of little section of the main uh, image that it captures. So it's all black, and then with this little square in it. At which point, the Raspberry Pi software is kind of cool, because it allows me to zoom in on an area of interest. So I adjusted the command line till I got it zooming in on the, the image I wanted. Now, of course, it's slightly out of focus, but you'll also notice it's a bit grainy. And it's a bit grainy because 
it's not getting as much light as it wants. So, of course, the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, compensates for that, the camera module compensates for that by pushing up the gain. You can actually see little specks of noise because it's pushed up the gain to the point where it's actually amplifying the noise. Uh, this is, strangely enough, just like uh, Super 8 film because Super 8 film was the most sensitive of media. And, of course, shooting indoors under ordinary indoor light, it wouldn't have had a very good job. And exactly the same with my little Raspberry Pi camera. If I'd turned up with a couple of photographic lights, I'm sure that I would have got a much better image there. I did solve one useful thing which had worried me a lot. Of course, it's an 18 frame per second uh, camera. So the shutter rotates 18 times a second to take 18 Super 8 frames a second. Now, I was worried that the frame rate of the camera would inevitably be different from that of the uh, Raspberry Pi and sensor, and I would get a corresponding, corresponding flicker, flickeriness. Now, of course, that's what I got. The minute I fired it up first, it was very flickery. But another of the parameters that you can hand to the uh, Raspberry Pi lib camera software is the frame rate that you want it to uh, grab images at. And of course, if you set it to frame rate 18, it's rock solid and it just grabs 18 frames per second, at which point that's actually one quality issue which I was worried wasn't going to work and in fact worked brilliantly. So what's next with this? Uh, as I say, probably redesign the uh, sensor holder. That's the purple bit in this. It's had to have some purple filament in one of the printers, that's why. Um, probably redesign it, maybe bring it in from an angle slightly up this way, pointing at the lens from a slightly different angle from the way I've set it with the glue. That's to see if I can further reduce that black shutter artifact. And we'll see, we'll, we'll see if we can make something happen with that. Uh, what else? Probably see if I can find a narrower angle lens. That means I will get a much better resolution because a larger area of my uh, captured image will be the image I want rather than the image I have to throw away. Um, and of course then basically film in more light because uh, in an indoors without extra special photographic lighting, uh, of course the Raspberry Pi camera turned up the game and it became noisy. I think I'm going to next try with some film lights and see if I can get some outdoor shots. Because of course this is still a Raspberry Pi powered from the USB slot and I have to have a HDMI display attached to see what I'm doing and to issue commands. So the next thing I'm probably going to do as well is fix up a battery. There's just space there for an 18650, but it may end up being a LiPo pouch. And a little um, uh, 1S um, LiPo charger and protection board. Um, and then I can have a self-powered version and I can then set up the Linux install on the um, little SD card to automatically boot into the um, camera application. So I can turn it on, shove it in my camera, and it will just record in, let's say, five minute or 10 minute chunks continuously until I turn it off. Uh, that way I will be able to take it outdoors and film it under decent lighting conditions, and we'll see if that becomes better. Anyway, so that's my Super 8 digital cartridge. It's by no means perfect, but for the first time I can say that I've got an actual digital cartridge that works. It returns a visible quality image that is pretty much in focus, doesn't flicker like crazy, and actually shows what's in front of it quite well. So this series is by no means finished, but I consider this a success. I've made something that works. I don't have a sponsor for my videos, but as before, I'd like to take this moment to talk about something else I'm involved with away from my career writing about tech. I am a board member of a small non-profit called Trans Rescue. We get trans people like me out of dodgy and dangerous places around the world. I'd like you to go to our website, read our blog and see what we're up to, and if you can, help us in our work. Thanks very much and thank you for watching this video.